So it's it's not anybody's place to dictate to a woman how she should look, if she should be fat, if she should be slim, if she should be thick. And especially in this kind of industry where I, I where we are in. Um, but after having a kid, you know, I, I wanted I wanted to be a real out. Hi everyone, good day and welcome to Pulse One on One. My name is Rachel M.M. Isaac and today we are hanging out with one of the brains behind one of the biggest TV shows in over 11 countries of the world currently. I'm talking about the none other than the ever beautiful, super and multi-talented brown sugar, Amy Edo. <laughs> What an introduction. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. look you. so pretty. When you walked in, I was like, she's aging backwards. There's, it has to be some secrets. <laughs> yes. It's, what is the secret? It's the beauty secret of April. Have you heard of it? Oh, yes. Yeah, I watch your beauty routine, yeah. your skincare routine and all of that. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, this would have come later, but now that you mentioned it, I want to ask you. In a world where being light skin is a privilege to get you all the jobs. Yeah. So how have you managed to maintain this brown skin? Beautiful color. I mean, it's just like you said, it's a beautiful color. And I'd rather, I'd, I'd not choose any other color over my skin tone any day, any time. I think it's... It's one of the best parts of me. It's one of the best things that defines who I am. And for me, literally, it's just staying true to who you are, mm -hmm. staying true to what makes you unique. And I think that our skin tone is actually one of the most unique things about us. So I've just really fallen in love with my skin tone. I've loved it, I've nurtured it, nurtured it to a point where I had to go look for a resource for a, a skin care remedy yeah. or uh, you know, regimen that can take care of my skin tone and also just really flatter my skin tone yeah and then that's how we came up with beauty yeah. secrets of i April. remember how you said that you used something or you went somewhere yeah. for facials and then you just ruined your skin so you decided that you know what i'm going to come up with my brand and it's beautiful absolutely and because i always had a lot of girls who try to switch the colors they'll tell you oh because they're dark skin they can find the right products to kind of give life to their skin and i was like okay so if this is a problem this is a concern this is some place where it, you know, dark skin are not really catered to, you know, you just see like the basic stuff, the Vaseline's, the just normal things that don't really do much for your skin. And that's how we went into pre uh, creating Beauty Secrets of April, because that just gives you an extra care for the dark skin people. Anyone? Any? All right, so talking about something else that you created, one of the things I loved about Shantytown was seeing the language, the EBBO. Mm -hmm. I, so I'm from a part of states, but I oh, don't know are. the difference between EBBO and EFIC. Oh I just God. thought I understood. That is that such is a shame. You didn't say that on national TV. I, I, are you serious? Because people walk up to me, they'll be like, was it EBBO or EFIC? I'm like, I, I don't know. I know it's one of the one of both. Like, so you're one of those EBBO I, that I mix. Oh both languages up so i loved how you made that happen and how you're so fluent so did this have anything to do with growing up in a quibum state oh absolutely i grew up in a quibum state i'm a home base homegrown girl um i was brought up in a quibum i did i was born in calabar but then i grew up in a quibum and you know literally schooled there that's you know to a certain level so yes you know and i had parents i have parents who speak the language with us. Mm -hmm. So, of course, my environment. I'm really, I'm so acquired to the core. Yeah, I know. We saw that in, in Shantytown. Mm -hmm. And whose idea was it to infuse the language? Because it's one thing to be able to speak, it's another thing for it to be infused. I knew someone had to insist for it to happen. It, it was my idea, absolutely. Because I felt like if I have this kind of platform, I may not have a bigger platform to be able to bring my culture to, to the limelight. So, I, I mean, it was just, it just so happened that Uchinsa was already a cast. So when I, when I suggested um, changing the characters from Yoruba to, to a choir boom, you know, it just really made sense because Uchinsa was already a cast member and she was to play the character she played. So it just, it just made it easier. Okay, so do you speak Yoruba? I don't speak Yoruba, but I do learn languages for the sake of filmmaking. Would you have, you would have learned how to speak Yoruba? I would have learned, I, I learned how to speak Igbo on a movie set. Oh, for all the scenes that you had? I mean, yes, I've learned, I've spoken quite a, num quite a lot of Igbo in films, and it's not like I learned it anywhere else but on the movie set. So those are part of the things that challenges you as an actor. You want to be able to, okay, so you're supposed to play Bini, Edo, um, Igbo, whatever. You just learn on the job. 
All right, so let's talk about challenges because I like where this is going. I had some questions that I'd put down, but you've talked about challenges now. What other challenges did you face on the set? I know I saw the video of you learning how to fight and how uncomfortable it was. And I know that it must have been a lot playing producer, playing different characters. You know, you were playing the twin characters. You're playing producer. It, it's a lot of work and you had to fight and then say all those lines. What other challenges did you face on the set of Shantytown? Okay, so first of all, I, I didn't play, I didn't play producer, so to say. Okay. I do, I do have a partner who produced, who, um, my name is Chichi Nwara, of course. So we do, we did have like a whole array of line producers who are amazing at what they do. So other than just structuring the project, you know, setting it out, doing the casting, you know, assembling the, the team, the crew, the technical team, assembling you know the creative aspects of the story the minute we got on set the producers they took over the line directors the line producers the of course my partner who we co-produced together you know I just so I sort of was able to focus on being an actor and that allowed me to be able to train for the fight scenes be able to do the language thing be able to sit in a car in, in a, a dual character so to say so I did more focusing on my job as, as a job as an actor. So what informed your decision to go into filmmaking? Well, I, when you love what you do, you realize that at some point you want to, I'm a creative person. So I have a lot of creative ideas and I understand creativity and how it should go. You, you realize that just being an actor doesn't give you enough platform to be able to enforce or sort of implement or practice what your bring your creativity to light so to say but being going into filmmaking gives you that opportunity to be able to switch things the way you feel like things should be done uh, for instance you're talking about the language if i wasn't like part of the the filmmaking process i wouldn't have had the privilege of being able to you know make sure that my language was being put on that and that yeah absolutely so when you hunger when you want to have a say in storytelling, when you feel like your creativity is something that you want to put on display, you feel like people would buy into it. You want to be able to be in a position of authority where you can, you know, implement certain things. So that's one. And two is that I just I really love the idea of filmmaking because I mean storytelling is the, is the easiest way to convey your feelings, to convey a message, to get to people, you know, to tell a story, whatever story you want to tell. Storytelling, filmmaking is one of the easiest ways to convey messages. So, I mean, it's just totally natural for me to want to be a, a filmmaker. All right, so let's move away from filmmaking and Chantytown and talk <coughs> about you. Let's talk about your life behind all the glitz and glamour. Who exactly is Inyedo? The Inyedo that we know behind the screen, off the screen. <laughs> Who is Inyedo? Um, well, Inyedo is just your... I'm just like the girl next door, you know, I'm, I'm a very grounded person. I like to think that I'm a very grounded person. I'm a family oriented person. Um, I love God. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm special, so to say, but then I'm also like, just, I'm just a girl next door. You know, we just kind of chose different things in life. I like to feel like I'm like you. It's really, it's just what you see is what you get. You know, we just chose different career paths. It doesn't make us so different from one another. It's just what we now uphold as values, as morals, as beliefs that just sets us apart. But, you know, generally, I think that I'm just one of the easiest people you would find. I'm kind of cool, I think. Yeah. But I'm very human. I, I have my ups and downs. And downs. Yes. yes. Okay. So you're one of the people that I grew up watching. I'm, I'm saying like I'm old. Or she's, no. Like yeah. Like I'm I'm a grown woman. Yes. Yeah. So I grew up watching some of your movies. Um, Worlds Apart, Desperate Me, th those very early movies from way back. And um, looking at your journey, you've grown so far. Would you say that it's been worth it? And if you were to describe your journey, what would it be like? The story behind it. It's really, it's been a journey, like you said. It's been one step at a time. When I sit back and I look at it, I, 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 I like to think that I love my growth, my growing process. So it's a journey, it's been one step at a time, one thing after the other, you know. Um, would I say that it's been fulfilling? 
yes to a large extent i haven't given up even when things look tough even when things look like there's nothing in there for me i've held on to my dreams i've held on to my my vision my career path and everything and sometimes it feels like a struggle but yeah i struggle through it but um it's been quite rewarding because i mean i am who i am today as a result of this journey this journey has brought me this far that's why i'm i'm sitting here with you today so it's it's all a part of who i am interesting you know how they say that the price of um fame is really high would you say that fame has cost you any price so far in your life i mean obviously it has fame 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 was like it gives and it takes so it gives you the life that you have and then it takes a certain part of you perhaps your privacy perhaps your personal life it does take okay so well, I, I know i know how i know how impossible i know how difficult it might seem now to go a bit into your personal life i'm trying not to go there but i want to ask knowing that you just added a feather to your cap so now how do you juggle being an actor a producer and motherhood how do you juggle everything because now i know that you might have plans to produce more shows or be behind the camera more how do you intend to juggle all three roles at a time uh, you know the good thing about what we do is everything is periodic you know you don't like now i'm not filming so if i'm not here talking to you and perhaps i'm at home with my child so you know you everything is planned and then you have times where you have to be at home and time when you have to go out and work but you have to work because you have to feed the child and take care of the home so We'll find a way to create the balance. I've been blessed with really amazing people that work with me. I've been blessed with family who are always around. So my child has a, a very strong family support. She has amazing people who cater to her when I'm not around. But I don't, I'm not working every time. So I sit around and I plot myself. Like now, how many projects do I want to do in a year? I'm not jumping from sets to sets like we used to anymore. anymore. <laughs> So that's a good thing that gives me time to plan. Sometimes if I have to travel, we travel together. But now she's in school, so of course, you know, I just I try to regulate my time and know I prioritize things and just know what's what's what goes when and how. how. So I'm tempted to ask, what's the favorite thing about being a mother? Everything about it is interesting to be honest. It's just the part where so for me, I think one of the sweetest things is when she just you know, looks at you and just holds you, pats you at the back, almost like, don't go, don't leave me, you know. Especially when you're about to go out, she just grabs you and like, she doesn't want to let go. And you have to start figuring out how to trick her into running out of the house without Playing seeing you. Playing the old you. trick again. You know what that. I mean? <laughs> the same old thing. So it's just how the connection is just really, most times overwhelming. Okay, so now back to Shantytown. What exactly attracted you to the project? What made you say, you know what, we're doing this story, we're shooting it and nothing is stopping me? The story behind the, the, the story behind Shantytown, the story that is Shantytown, the message that I felt like people needed to hear, the awareness that I felt like we needed to bring to these situations, um, you know, it wasn't just about reading an interesting story. Just understanding that this lifestyle, this whole, this whole community exists. You know, they're just not being called Shantytown. But there's a community that reflects, Shantytown reflects an existing community within our society. And you begin to think that, wow, so you live where you live perhaps very oblivious of the fact that things like this are actually really happening and people are dealing with this kind of things especially women yeah. are having to live like this are having to you know go through these things they're children who are being empowered every day given guns and being taught how to become thugs at very tender ages yeah. you know so i felt like especially considering the times and the society that we live in I felt like we part of the major problems that we are encountering every day in Nigeria. These, this, this whole thing, it's kind of surrounds with this. I mean, we are talking about kidnapping. We are talking about um, killings in season. You know, just random killings. You know, we are talking about lack of empathy towards one another. 
no compassion you know amongst us as humans um how do you how do people grow to a point where they can take each other's lives without it meaning anything you know and you realize that this most of these people had started this got these trainings from then when they were kids even the bible say i said it to train a child the way he should go and when he's, when he's grown he will not depart from it so what that means is that you never let you start teaching a child how to be brutal how it becomes to be a part of them it becomes a part of them to live without a conscience without a heart so i felt like considering the times it's an important story to tell to shed light and to know that we're living in this society in where we're living in the comfort of our homes there was this other life going on out there within our same society, you know? Just to throw light on the subject matters for me were like really the high point of doing Shantytown. Okay. All right. Um, I can tell that you're a big advocate for women's rights. Yes. Yeah. So I'd like to know what your take is on um, people who body shame women um, and your take on body positivity, especially women who decide that, oh, I can enhance my body, I can do whatever I deem fit because it's my body. What's your take? What, what are the words that you have to say to them? I mean, I, I just feel like anybody who sits around judging people, nobody has the right to tell anybody how to live their lives or who to be and who not to be. It's not your place. You don't have that right. And, and so for me, I say to people who do that, I'm like, it's almost like you cannot, you, you, you have to first of all be able to dictate the pace of your life to be able to dictate somebody else's pace. It makes no sense that you have no control over your own life and you're trying to think that it's okay to have control over somebody else's life. It doesn't make any sense. And I said to women, I said, you be your own person, you make your own choices and leave it the, the, the consequences of your choices, of your actions, all right? So it's, it's not for anybody's place to dictate to a woman how she should look, if she should be fat, if she should be slim, if she should be thick. And especially in this kind of industry where, I, I, where we are in. I remember there was a time people used to say to me, oh, you added so much weight, you should lose weight. You know, people begin to put all those crazy ideas in your head. And if you as a woman, you allow it, it forms an expression. You know, it takes you to some, some people fall into places where they start to doubt themselves and they start to, you know, their self-confidence begins to dwindle because of the constant you know the negative yes. that you're hearing yeah. but you need to grow to a point where you realize that it is your body it is your life it is nobody else has the right to tell you do this or don't do this it is your right to say this is what i want to look like this is how i want to look and you know you do whatever you whatever works for you as long as you're able to live with the consequences of your actions it's entirely your prerogative. I'm telling you. All right, so it must be a lot being in the public eye and um, getting all the negativity, positivity included, yes. Yeah. So I want to ask, how exactly do you shut out the noise? Because it must be a lot, really, considering that you are there in their faces, they are in your faces. I can imagine that your comment section, there are like thousands of messages. So how do you shut out the noise? Ah, oh, God. You just talked about, okay, comment section. Let's even start from social media. But it's just, it's a funny place, you know. Um, you will learn it eventually. You'll get used to it. But it takes getting used to, to be honest. You need to, it's, it's a lot of working on yourself, working on your psyche as a person, working on your focus, on your drive, and um, just really staying focused on what your goals are. First of all, it takes a lot of confidence. You have to get into a place where you love yourself way more than anybody else can love you. And it's from that love that you love yourself that you realize that it really doesn't matter what the next person thinks. And I always say something, I am never expecting everybody in a room to like me. I don't try to make everybody in a room like me because it will never happen. And even if it happens, it can change tomorrow. And it's a lot of work working to get people to like you. Do you get so I am for me I'm somebody who I am very big on conscience. I'm very big on what what is right, what my spirit tells me is right. And if my spirit tells me that I'm not hurting anyone and I'm not I'm not what you think I am, I just I just look at it like they don't know me. And so there's every ten I'm a lot to take in. I'm, 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 I know that, I've, yeah. you know, I'm a lot to take in. So I, it's, you know, it's easy for someone to say, oh, she's just, it's too much. She does too much. I, I can be too much, but that's how I'm, that's how God created me. That's what he made me to be too much. So for people who are unable to handle my 
too muchness, I can't help them. You know, so he, talk, he talks about comments. If you go to comment sections, for instance, this is, I'm talking about what works for me or how I'm able to deal with these things. I click on a comment, a certain, sometimes people send me, I don't like to read the comments, but sometimes I just go through it for the sake of it. And I see some really supposedly upsetting comments. I click on the person's page. And I'm like, I just start laughing. Okay. Like, so why, why should I allow that comment to bother me? Because first of all, what is the basis? For, you, you, you know, the only, <laughs> you just have that platform. It's just because if I block my comments, perhaps you will not find where to comment. Yeah. But because I've opened my comments, it's a platform I'm giving you to be able to access. But guess what? I choose, you see what you want to hear. You see, I take the positive energy. I take the positive, com the positive com energy usually overwhelms the negative energy. And I just, that's how I shut it down. So I take the, I look around me, I see the people who love me for real. And that's enough. You know, I just, I focus on that. I focus on the positive. I just leave everybody else with the negative energy. Because guess what? What you give, you cannot give what you don't have. So if you're a sad person, you can't give joy to anybody. You can't, if you're not happy with yourself, you cannot share that happiness with anyone because you don't have it. And so it's, it's, I, most times I feel, I feel sympathetic towards some people because you just begin to wonder like for you to say something like like this to someone you must be really must be, you must be in a really dark place so you need help but unfortunately I'm not a therapist so I can't I can't help you you know <laughs> love it you know so I just I focus on the positive very energy very I'm very intentional and I just I don't want, I don't, I don't acknowledge the negative energy. Hmm. Another thing I noticed from this interview is how big you are on family values. Yes. Yeah. So does this have anything to do with your upbringing, the way your family is closely knitted together? Well, for me, family, family is everything because I mean, friends come and go. Uh, marriages even come and go. Relationships sometimes come and go. But you see, the one people that would ride for you forever would be your family, you know? And I mean, like I said, I grew up with my parents, my two parents together till date. And, you know, we've been through like really tough times as well, but there's been a very deliberate attempt at keeping us all together in one place, good or bad, you know? Um, it's just actually you just will not find anybody else who will write for you as much as your family would at the end of the day i mean for me that's just that's just that's just the first point of that's who you are as a person every other thing follows you know like the love you get from your family the protection or the sort of just the prayers the fact that they can stand together and yeah, like the pillar the on which you stand on absolutely. yeah absolutely so these are people that will spiritually go in for you. Do you get fast and pray for you? Do whatever they have to do just to hold you together. And even when things are really bad, when it looks like everybody else thinks the worst of you, your family will always be there for you. So uh, for me, it's just, that's the first thing that I have. Okay. And so it's important to me to just keep it going. All right. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to ask a bit more about your character in him because it was one of my favorite characters for obvious reasons that I mentioned in the beginning. What was the favorite thing or your favorite thing about playing that character? And what was the most challenging thing about playing that character? Favorite and challenging parts. Um, but you know, the favorite are always the, cha the challenges. When you, when you watch it, you realize that the challenges are actually the interesting parts of the character. So for me, it would be like the fight scenes, or, you know, because obviously I'm not, I'm not a fighter, <laughs> but I had to learn how to fight. I had to learn, I had to do a lot of practice on martial arts. And that was, that took us about six weeks of consistent trainings. I'd finish work out and then go to fight. You know, that was challenging, but that was actually also one of the reasons why I, I wanted to play that role because I saw the things that would challenge me, which is what I look out for yeah. in stories. So then getting to speak my language was perhaps the high point of it. Um, 
you know because it's something i've always wanted to do i've always wanted to do so for me it was so important it was so fulfilling for me that i finally got to do that um the character in them also you know being able to go on the undercover as a policewoman which i have never really explored as an actor i mean playing a police you know right so um being able to convincingly convince shanty town that i was one of them was also very interesting because it was really important that that undercover stayed undercover. Yeah. Because if I had blown myself for any reason, all Cow would have scared you. <laughs> you, you understand? Yeah. I mean, if I wasn't convincing enough, then the audience would already have gotten the message. Yeah. You could tell that absolutely from the beginning. So the fact Try that. Try not to give spoilers here though. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so for I, those I'm thinking that by now, they would have, everybody yeah. would have seen Santa's Yeah. Out. This, well, well, you never know. Majority of Nigerians would have seen it, but some people have to yeah, see it. Yeah, you guys need to watch see it. so we can have a proper conversation. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Yeah. So as we're saying, yeah. 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 I mean, th those are the challenges, and that was the interesting part. You asked about the the high points and the low. Points. Okay. Okay. So what do we expect from Inyedo going forward? More producing jobs or Absolute, acting jobs? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's just really interesting that with all the platforms we have now, we are inspired to do better stories. We are inspired to do better projects, stronger projects that would ultimately put um, Nigerian film making industry on a global pedestal, on a global platform. So with all this, of course, this outlets that we have now, the inspiration is really not just for me. I want to believe that I speak for every other filmmaker out there. We are really inspired to take Nollywood, to give it the much, much, much needed, you know, breakthrough that it's needed forever. Okay, so I, I, I have this question to ask you. I know you've played a lot of characters in your career. I want to know what is that one character that you really, really look forward to playing? It could be a person who's still alive. It could be a person that is no longer here with us. One character that if you could play, you'd give it your all and just know that even if I don't do any job after today, <laughs> this is it. I think I want a villain. I'd love to play like a, yeah, I'd love to play like a villain, like a Scar character, a female Scar, for instance. Hmm. That would be interesting. No, see? Maybe shut that's it down too. You just come and then the would you I, don't I don't know. Or maybe at the end of the day is that the other sister didn't go and then she comes. Well, we back. don't know because the other sister, because, you because, know. So when it happens, it'd be like, Rachel said it. <laughs> she said it first on the show. No, I didn't say nothing at all. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a part of the show today. But before you go, the general elections are almost here. Because of how much I love to hear my language, I'd want you to tell people to go get their PVC and to vote in if they do. All right, let's do this. <laughs> okay, the time So election is already. Kake bought PVC info. But I'm able to be sinful. I'm going to make a number of songs in the country. I'm going to take it. 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 I'm going to a word is enough for the wise. <laughs> so you, you, you say that in in, in the Bibi as well. In the Bibi, yes. Hey, a word is say. enough. Um, <sighs> oh my God! Go get your PVC and vote for the right candidate. <laughs> Thank you. Make so sure much. you vote, guys. It's so important. Let's go out and vote. Thank you so much. Thank I you. really enjoyed the sit down. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. So, guys, this has been Paul's one on one with Iniedo. Get your PVC and vote. My name is Rachel M M Isaac. See you next time. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.